Hello everyone, you have understood the nutrition, you know the nutrients and you also know what is the impact on health, but how to assess that? Today you are going to learn about the assessment of nutritional status. I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal. In this picture, you can see the small baby which is preterm. Then as that the child or the infant grows, that grows in body size, it may be in weight, it may be in height, it may be in body proportion. Let us see what is nutritional status. It is the condition of health of a person that is influenced by the dietary intake and the level of nutrient in the body to maintain the normal body functions is called nutritional status. There is a normal nutritional status, how you attain it with the balanced food intake that is not enough. You have to have the proper utilization of nutrient which you are getting from the food. So, in combination of the balanced food intake and proper utilization of nutrients gives you the normal nutritional status. But when these things are deviating, then what happens? It is a poor nutrition and we also use the term malnutrition though it is a very wide term. Globally malnutrition is so much in India and in other countries also and why it happened? Low food intake and faulty utilization of nutrients so there is a disbalance. What is malnutrition? Let us understand the basic definition of it. Malnutrition is undesirable state of health which adversely affects the internal functioning of the body. And when it occurs? It occurs when the supply of energy and nutrient does not ensure the growth and maintenance of the body. What are the reasons for that? There are n number of reasons, but we have categorized some of them. Number one, decrease availability of food. How it can be decreased? There is not enough productivity of food. Number two is ignorance. There are chances that you wrongly choose the food. And in case of the children and infant, you practice wrong feeding methods. People do not know what is the right kind of feeding processes for the infants. The third is economic condition. What is that? You do not have enough money to buy the nutrient containing food. There are chances that cheap food is available, but that is very high in energy. Now, fourth, increased nutritional demand. Your body demands are very high. For example, in case of infancy, in case of pregnancy, in case of lactation. Another major reason is poor hygiene and environmental stresses, which are n number of stresses in the environment and many of them are controllable and many of them are not. You have to have the clean sanitized environment. Let us see what can happen. The consequences of malnutrition, hunger, poverty, deviation in body composition, body weight, body height, then poor mental growth. The child is not able to grow properly which may not be visible at the earlier stages but very much reflected when the child goes to the school. 
there he shows the poor academic performance. Hidden hunger, there is a micronutrient deficiency. Your stomach is full, you are not hungry, but your body is hungry, that is called hidden hunger. Your body requires some amount of micronutrient which are not present in your diet. Then increase absence from the bug. You keep on taking the off because you are sick, chronic fatigue. You always feel tired. Then you keep on having the infection, keep on falling sick. Morbidity means falling sick again and again. Then mortality. Some of the sickness can be fatal also. And overall, there is a poor quality of life. So, malnutrition can be categorized into two, overnutrition and undernutrition. Over means that you are consuming more amount of food or more amount of energy and there is a disbalance or misbalance in the intake of energy and nutrient. There are chances energy intake is more but nutrient intake is less and you may be overnourished but inside you are undernourished. Undernourishment is definitely due to the poor dietary intake or poor nutrient intake. Now, how we will understand how to assess these things? Mainly, there are three methods. Number one, measurement of physical body in terms of weight, in terms of height and in terms of the body circumferences. In body circumferences, it can be your girth, body circumference, it can be your head, it can be your arm, which is called mid arm circumferences. Second method is dietary intake. Third is identification of nutritional deficiency diseases. In this, you can see the eye. On the side, you can see the black spot. They are bitot spot and reflect the vitamin A deficiency. And this is another picture this is only of the depiction of the weighing scale. When we are talking about the body, physical body measurements, we will talk about the weight and height. And there is a technical word for that is known as anthropometric measurements. Wherever you come across such word, so that includes the measurement of weight, height and body circumferences. Very easy to use, very good indicator of the nutritional status. It can be done anywhere, whether it is a hospital, whether it is a community, anywhere in the house also. So, there is simple bathroom scale on which you can stand and take the weight. Another is the little stadiometer for height measurement. You can the fix it on the wall and you can see the flap and that flaps comes on your head when you are standing and your measurements are reflected there. But for young children, it is very difficult, particularly in the community. So, I have shown here some of the pictures here. When you go to a doctor or the pediatrician who only take, tackles the young children, so there is a balance on that this child is laid down and the height is also taken and the weight is also taken down. And when you are going to a community, there is a another kind of circular picture you are seeing here and there is a hook on that you just put up the, it is a paint like structure. You just slide the child into it in the lower picture you can easily see very safely and just remove the your hand from there and then you can figure out your weight. On the left side also you can see where my weight is going, the scale is attached there. So, there are two types of, there is a round scale and there is a one year kind of scale. Very easy method, you take the child in somebody's health and then take the weight of the both the person 
child as well as the individual or the mother whosoever is there then without that only the that particular lady and minus that you will get the weight of the child world health organization has standardized some weights and height measurements in different countries but different countries have their own variations so in 2008 our country has standardized the conditions for measuring the height and weight of the child how they can so these are the graphs and each mark reflects the age of the person you can see the white band and you can also see the lines there you can see the numbers also so one month two months and everywhere so first band is for one year second band is for and most of the time when you go to icds in the community that anganwadi worker take the weight and put it the dot here and tell you whether the child is okay or not when you go to a pediatrician that same child is given to you and they keep on preparing the graph for you whether the child is going healthy or not so wherever the blue color is reflected that reflects for the boys this is pink this is for the girls now there are few terms to measure the malnutrition or undernutrition at national stage we do not put only the weight and height but to advise or to reflect the status of the malnutrition we use three terms stunted underweight and wasted i repeat stunted means low height for the age underweight low weight for the age and wasted low weight for the given height here also we have shown you in an example the the sita is of 4 years old and her weight is 12 kg and all this compare this 4 year sita with the other person then you can easily learn whether the child is malnourished or undernourished healthy or not healthy normal or malnourished or overnourished another method is dietary intake that means whatever you are eating is recorded and on that basis we assess how much nutrient you are taking in whether they are less or more and dietary intake is a recording of all the food items consumed in different meals in last 24 hours that is why it is popularly known as 24 hour recall method today we have my very good friend shweta hi hello hi, uh, i will just take few minutes of yeah, yours yeah, sure. so it will help our learners how to take the 24 hour recall method okay all right so you just memorize <laughs> what you have eaten right. so what did you eat yesterday uh, i had roti and dal Okay, no yes. vegetables. No, I did not take any vegetables. Ah, uh, do you remember how much you must have taken? Ah, uh, I think I had one kotori dal and one chapati. Okay. Yes. In a specific reason, you don't like the vegetables or any other reason? No, I very much like, but I did not get time to cook the vegetables. Okay. Yes. So, ah, uh, in that case, whatever you have eaten at different meals, can you tell that in breakfast, in lunch? in tea and this so uh, friends when you assess all these things you must note down what what she has eaten in breakfast what she has eaten in lunch what she has eaten in evening tea and what she has eaten in dinner and you must also ask in otherwise besides these major timings a major meal timing what she has eaten in so this is the way you need to take the dietary intake or 24 hours recall method thank you sheta thank you for giving your precious time thank to you, us thank you my pleasure ma'am thank you you have learned the dietary recall method but you have to have some kind of measurements of the household utensils because whatever people are using in their daily life 
that has to be taken care of. But for certain measurements, National Institute of Nutrition or NIN Hyderabad has given certain measurements what can define how much is a tablespoon or teaspoon or a cup or the katori or plate and etc. Few of the things I would like to show it here. So, this is called teaspoon which you regularly use in your daily life. This contain only approximately 5 ml of liquid, but in case of the solid food it may vary. For example, if we are taking the sugar that may be equivalent to the 5 grams and if we are measuring the oil that may be the 5 ml. So, it is becomes very easy you are putting 1 teaspoon of oil. So, you can assess I have taken 5 ml of oil and then you can further assess the amount of nutrient it may provide. This is teaspoon. Now, I will show you the tablespoon. This tablespoon contains 15 ml of the liquid and approximately similar amount of the solid food, but that solid food amount in weight may vary food to food. So, this is tablespoon. See these are two katoris. This is little broader, this is little narrow, but the amount of water comes in is the same. So, you need to really assess when you are calculating or assessing any kind of dietary intake, how much you have eaten, whether it is half, one fourth, full. So, that person will easily tell you I have eaten this much only and you can easily assess how much nutrient intake or dietary intake this particular person has taken. Now, similarly there is a plate, this is half plate only. So, we have to sometime measure, so half plate rice. So, this is you do not have to have a heap, but the balance and approximately chapatis are also of the same size. So, on the number we can assess that. And we approximately use the this size of rice, this may be in different size, shape, anything, but approximately 200 ml is considered as a glass and 150 ml is considered as a cup. You have taken the day 1, I am just reflecting here and here the breakfast, lunch, evening tea and dinner. In one column you are seeing the food item another column immediately you can understand what kind of nutrient this food can provide. So, in breakfast this person has eaten on day 1 the milk only, so it you have the protein intake. Then in lunch this person has eaten the rice and dal, so this means this person has eat, taken the carbohydrate and protein. In the evening this person has eaten some kind of save, so save generally contains some amount of besan or some that is from pulse or the chana flour is called besan. So, with this and you have the fat also in which they are fried. So, you can assess that this food can provide the protein and the fat. In the dinner this person has taken the gobi alu ki sabzi and the roti. So, immediately you can understand this person has some taken some carbohydrate vitamins etc. So, this is how the thing. Here in this picture you will see so many things, but let me explain you. In earlier lessons you must have understood the variety of foods you are supposed to take and National Institute of Nutrition has given all the amount of food one person should have it different age, we are giving just an example for men sedentary and women sedentary lab. 
activity level. So, cereals and millets which contains the your rice, chapati, from bajra, anything. So, in the bracket you are seeing the 30 gram that reflect one serving. Whatever is written in the bracket is the amount of that particular item in one serving only. Cereals and millets one serving 30 grams, pulses 30 grams, milk and milk products 100 ml, GLV which is also called as green leafy vegetables or other vegetables 100 gram, roots and tubers that means potatoes, colocasia etc are 100 gram. Other vegetables includes your loki, parval, all these things are 100 gram, fruits 100 gram, sugar 5 gram and fat gram. In next two columns you are seeing some figures that will indicate how much quantity of food sedentary men should consume. If cereals are 30 grams multiplied by 12.5 should be consumed by the sedentary men, but women only 9 into 30 gram that means only 210 grams of cereals is more than enough for the lady. Pulses 2.5, 30 into 2.5 that means approximately 75 gram pulses has to be consumed every day by a man but only 60 gram by a woman. Milk products 100 ml, 3 that means 300 ml by a man and 300 ml by a woman. Green leafy vegetables 100 gram by both, then roots and vegetables 200 grams by both and other vegetables 200 grams. So, on an average you will see approximately 500 grams of vegetable should be consumed by an adult on a daily basis. Fruits 100 gram, sugar only 5 into 4 that means only 20 gram and when we are eating multiples of it. Fat 5 into 5 that means 25 grams of fat is more than enough whether you eat it, whether you cook into it, whether you fry it, that is up to you. But you should eat on a daily basis only 25 grams by the man and only 20 grams by the woman. So, that is how if you assess how much food I have to eat on a regular basis, this table is given by the National Institute of Nutrition and these are the recommendations for the adult men and women who are going to the office and doing the sedentary work. So, you have learned two major methods, one is your body measurements, second is your dietary intake. Now, we will go the third method of assessing the nutritional status that is identification of nutritional deficiency disease and we will identify them by only the physical signs and symptoms and common one are protein energy malnutrition, vitamin A deficiency, anemia which is due to iron deficiency disorder and iodine deficiency and these four are not only common in our country, but all of the world in various corners. So, these are some of the nutritional deficiency diseases we will study one by one. First, we will talk about the protein energy malnutrition, which is very common in children and it can be categorized as marasmus and koshyokar, which you can see in the picture. And now, we will learn about their symptoms, how you can identify whether this child is suffering from Kashyakar or marasmus. Now, this is the particular typical picture of Kashyakar, the stomach is very big and legs and hands are very thin. This is a typical case of Kashyakar, we are not talking about what ha can happen, but we are trying to identify only through the symptoms. Low in weight and have frequent episodes of infection, 
edema is typical symptom of the cauchure curve and edema on feet and face. You will see the good golmatol kind of face, the big swelling on the feet and when you press this your finger or thumb goes inside and mark a depth that is an indication of edema. Pot belly, fatty liver which you cannot see inside but there is a fatty liver which is drawn by your doctor, patchy hair you have the hair here, you have the hair here, you have and the moon shaped face. Now another is the case of marasmus not able to react any stimuli, the child is sitting like this. Whether you are talking, whether you are giving the food or something, the child is so weak, so weak that that child cannot react to any kind of stimuli. Frequent infection illness is a regular phase, a rib cage is visible, total hunger, edema is not there, that is the difference between the Koshukar and the marasmus, no fatty liver and the skin is hanging. Now next is what you can see in vitamin A deficiency, night blindness, when you go inside the dark, it is all dark you, because after some time in a healthy case of eye, within a seconds you are able to accommodate your eyes, your pupils can see a little bit in the dark but and white portion of the is dry, immunity is very poor and internal organs of your body and the skin of that is dysfunction, you get frequent episodes of infection. In case of anemia, the, you can see the two hands, one is yellow and one is pink. So pink is a healthy one, the yellow one is anemic one, there is a constant tiredness, loss of appetite, shortness of breath, even on slight exertion, paleness. Brittle and the another very important is your nails are very brittle, they are just broken down and, and there are sharp edges on the nails, irritability, poor performance and the brain development in childhood is not there which is not visible at that age but very, very seen when you grow and go to, goes to the school, school when you are anemic. In case of iodine deficiency, there is a constant fatigue. Iodine because your thyroid, your basic organ which controls the or regulate the whole body function is not properly functioning. We are mentally retarded, particularly the children, poor brain development, stunted growth, poor concentration and there is a called the swollen neck, you can see in the picture, the goiter is there. I will just mention few prevalence cases in our country. Wasted children 15.5, underweight 47.5 percent, stunted 45.5 percent and this data is from the National Family Health Survey which is done in 2006. Other is number of women with anemia and this data is very updated, that is 55 percent of the women from India are anemic. Number of children pregnant and lactating mothers with vitamin A deficiency 40 percent according to the WHO and according to the UNICEF 2000 iodine deficiency 18 million people in our country are having that. So you can see the panorama of the deficiency. So this is whole about how you can assess the nutrition status or health of a person through three methods, one is taking the body measurements taking the dietary recall and identifying the deficiency symptoms and you can handle the patients or the person accordingly whether it is in a household, whether it is in community, whether it is in a clinical practice or in hospital. Thank you so much. I hope you have understood the whole lesson how to assess the nutritional status. Thank you once again.